Thanks, John, and uh, welcome, everyone. And uh, a couple of um, major thank yous. Um, we really so appreciate working with Taita College, um, Karen Morgan, who's the principal, and the staff, and the students. It's an awesome place and such a privilege to be here. And thanks also to our staff. And I'd like to thank um, all our students um, who are throughout the country. Uh, and it's only, I don't know, at the max, maybe a third in this area. So we're scattered far and wide. So this is the first part of what I want to mention, getting lost to find ourselves. Um, TROC stands for Targeted Review of Qualifications. And this was, a, um, I think, a well-meaning bureaucratic project to tidy up the number of qualifications. But what it meant for us is that creativity was likely to be swallowed up in the regular arts and design area. And we knew that we were quite different from that. So we set out to have creativity in the system as a registered course. Now the cost of that in money and human energy has been phenomenal. Our guess is it's somewhere between $2 million and $3 million worth. And that kind of takes my breath away. Uh, but it's true. The, and the reason we can only say two to three million is we don't know how many enrolments it has cost us because really we had to come off the road and just work vigorously, extremely vigorously, very, very sustained. And the people who've done this, they've put in epic work. And it's been going for about, what, four to six years, something like that. And it has felt like um, being in a maze because day to day, we haven't quite known uh, where we are. And um, today we got an email um, from QA saying it will enter the final phase. We've done all our um, level four, five and six qualifications. They're now going to the, um, what do they call them? The um, peer review team. They've got through the first huge process and are likely to get the tick for that over the next day or two. They may even come on stream at the beginning of the next term. So that's been huge, and we're really pretty thrilled about that. And I think it'll make a big difference both to new students, present students, and everyone else. Big story, more to come. The next um, somewhat hidden part of what we're doing has been technological, and um, the IT system that we call the workroom has been a giant step. We trawled through um, so-called um, learning management systems from everywhere we could find them, and none of them fitted what we wanted to do. They were all really to control students and to do things to students. And as far as creativity is concerned, we want to do things with students. So we've gone through this massive process of getting the workroom sorted. And uh, at the beginning of this term, it came on board. It's live and operating. But at that very same time, it's undergoing refinements. We just wanted to get it going at the earliest possible stage. And the refinements will come on stream pretty steadily, actually. Lots are already up and running. Um, and I think at the same time, anyone paying attention to um, news knows, knows that um, the whole planet, politically especially, is in turmoil. But um, I, I mean, the view of what's been happening uh, with the rains this week shows it's more than um, just um, people having arguments with each other. The weather is changing. And I, th I think always, from a human point of view, the world's been a bit chaotic, but um, now maybe the chaos um, is more apparent than it ever has been. And there are big questions, like what will the next jobs be? And I, I was intrigued looking at this picture of an assembly line with cars, and um, I finally managed to see 
there's one guy out on that side and tucked away somewhere here, I can't even spot him, there's another human. It's all being done by robots. So we have to think, what will the next jobs be? And tertiary education has never really had to contend with this in this way. This, I, I, you can tell how um, long ago it was I put this together. That was the front page picture in the paper today, um, except I got it from the web. Uh, and that's part of the global warming story, really. It's a catastrophic um, thing for Edgecombe, but it's um, part of a bigger catastrophe. So th things like where we live, and it's not just what will it cost in these terms, the, the money part, part of finding a place to live has gone berserk. So here there are some big issues like that. And you look at it and you think, what will new jobs be? I, I mean, are people going to get jobs doing stop banks or working to reduce global warming? Uh, the stop banks are mainly going to be done by diggers, not very many people. Managing water, I mean, there, there will be jobs there. Funny thing, oceans are rising, but water's getting more problematic. Supplying food, sorry about the spelling, um, that's another thing that um, is, is a biggie. I think possibly helping to build peace is one of the most important things going. And there's such a, a magnetic attraction to building things that enable conflict, but there is no equivalent attraction to creating peace. And I think if we put um, even a modest portion of the money that goes into the military, into peace work, it would make a big difference. And curiously, in New Zealand, um, I did a program with the army some years ago, not far from here, actually, and um, they, they were overwhelmingly, at the level I was talking to them, um, keen on the development of New Zealand as a force that contributed to peace and peacekeeping rather than the usual idea of military action. So in a sense, the whole of New Zealand has been pretty impressive. But I think in other areas, like with, um, you know, what do we do about global warming? I think New Zealand has a fantastic opportunity to actually set an example and lead. And I think it's long overdue that we actually resumed that leadership role. The other thing, um, that I, th I think is really important for our students in particular, and of course our staff, is thinking, what is it that robots can't do? And what I would call real creativity, deep creativity, whatever you like to call it, is something the robots have not come anywhere near. They can play poker, they can play chess, they can do a whole bunch of amazing things, better than humans, but what I would call creativity that they're barely through the first door. There's a long way to go. It's interesting thinking how we actually create um, mazes. And uh, I think downtown actually has, when you look at it from a height, it actually has the feeling of a maze too. And um, how we find our way around in that is an interesting challenge. But at the same time, we are built of mazes. I still have the ink on my finger. This is very fresh. Um, our fingerprints are surprisingly like a maze. And the big question is, how do you deal with a maze? I mean, the maze is a long-term image of human development. And they, they go back, goodness knows how long, probably thousands of years. And that they are symbolic of a, of a kind of rite of passage, but it's, it's really bigger than that. Now, one of the curious parts of all this is the, the way our minds are built, or our brains anyway. Actually, I don't like thinking of our brain as our mind, but it's part of our mind. It's as if they're, they're geared for mazes, because when you look into them, they're like a maze, the cellular connections are extraordinary. And when you get into the processes of art and the processes of nature, you suddenly connect 
with maze navigation in a really special way. And this doesn't look like the trad stuff of 123 ABC. It's something organic and different, and it's what we're doing. That's just um, printed wettish ink. And that in nature, you find the, these patterns in nature just everywhere, autumn leaf. And it, it's interesting to me that when kids arrive, they almost instinctively um, get into this confusion of the world and make things happen. And I, I love it when you see three, four and five year olds just into it. And this is um, doing drawing on quite a grand scale compared to Ella's size, isn't it? <coughs> they solve problems. Um, and the, again, the creativity of kids is staggering because that is a woman talking. The X's are the words. And it was actually by my sister when she was four years old. She didn't know how to write the words. But she created a way of doing a picture which showed the words. I thought, what an extraordinary thing. Because in the history of art, um, it took a very long time for that to happen. She hadn't known anything about the history of art. <coughs> there it is. Um, my brother, who... Um, he had a great sense of humour. Uh, this was a picture of a duck that was in a boat because it didn't have webbed feet. <laughs> and he put the boat together with a stapler and um, I, I thought that was just ingenious, funny and, again, wonderful problem solving. And they kept coming up with stuff like that all the time, relentlessly, enough to drive us nuts, really. Now, there are some points, and I, I've written about these in the program notes, just points about how to make it happen. One of the biggest things is figure what you can do now. And curiously, uh, people sometimes think of TLC as the product of a great vision. Well, I could equally well say it was a product of great blindness, because really all we concentrated on was being in the moment, working with the people who showed up, paying attention, and it grew. It belongs to everyone who's been through. And so that's what we did. We concentrated on what we're able to do now. From a personal point of view, you have to own the story. And part of that means it's not anyone else's fault. It's not good luck, bad luck, or anything else. It's your story. It's also pretty important to make decisions and um, I am sometimes quite slow to um, make decisions and I quite like deadlines. I, I said to Alice I'd um, prepared something to say for graduation. She said, well, that's good because it's tonight. <laughs> um, so things like that help me to make decisions. Another biggie for us is the practice is the theory. I, I find it so difficult that a lot of people go through school being taught theory as if eventually you come to the practice. They're not separable. The practice is how the theory emerges. And I love the way you can discover everything from what is here. I could just about tell you the whole of maths, physics, art, creativity from what is in this theatre now, if we had time. It'd take me more than my a lot of time. Next thing is actually try something. And um, sometimes that's quite challenging because we live in a risk-averse world and part of creativity is trying stuff and accepting that, like any experiment, some of, some of the tests aren't going to give you the wondrous result. But you've got to start trying things and building from them. Next thing, you keep at it. Once something happens, you pay attention, you adjust, you adapt, you try it again. And you keep going until whatever it is works. And that sense of patience is all too easy to forget. Little kids, 
when they're learning, will try words or try to, to make noises thousands of times before it works. And it's so easy to lose track of the fact that we need to do something similar. We do not get it first time necessarily. And uh, by the way, we, we don't lose our capacity to learn. I, th I think that's ongoing. I think the biggest thing about learning is getting excited about things, getting captivated about stuff. And once you get to the end of number six, you figure what to do next and go back to number one. So it keeps going, and it's what uh, basically we've called the creative spiral, and we've introduced that to NZQA, and I think um, it's going to be part of the deal in creativity for quite a long time to come. Now, this is um, going back to a place um, where Alice and I actually visited. It's in Chartres Cathedral, but at the time we were there, it was um, all covered off. I don't know quite what they were doing, but the maze needed upkeep. But the symbol there, the maze connects with physical, social, spiritual, intellectual, mathematic, aesthetic aspects, all of those things. And that particular um, maze is, is sometimes described, in fact, on their publicity, described as a universe. So the, the maze part, to me, is a superb s symbol for what we're doing tonight. And that's my message to you. Let's be amazing together. Thank you.